constellation Leo is one of the few that looks similar to what it's supposed to represent. Legends have varied over time in terms of how this pattern became a lion, and to other cultures it wasn't a lion at all. But to the Sumerians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, and Romans, they all saw a lion within the pattern. So how did the lion come to be? One ancient Egyptian legend states that lions came to the Nile River during the summer months to cool off, and the summer is when the sun passes through Leo. Another theory states that because the sun is passing through Leo during the summer months, it was associated with the most powerful beast at that time, which was the lion. The most famous legend of Leo comes from the ancient Greek tale in which they believe this was the Nemean lion. Legend states that this mythological creature came down from the moon in the form of a meteor and ravaged the countryside until Hercules killed it. Let's take a look at what Leo the lion looks like in the sky. Remember, it can be seen during the spring months and it's highest in the sky during April. So when you're looking at this picture, some things to point out. You want to look for the asterism called the sickle right here. It also looks like a backwards question mark. And this would represent the head of the lion. If you move towards the back end right here, you can kind of see a triangle here. And this would represent the hind quarters of the lion. If we were to trace out the pattern of what Leo would look like in the sky with lines, here is the shape. So you would have that backwards question mark, also known as the sickle, and then you have the triangle hind quarters right here. And keep in mind that depending on whichever source or book you consult, this pattern can vary upon the source. Here is another vision of what Leo could possibly look like to somebody else. You would have the face right here, this would represent the mane, and then you have the body right here. I like this picture as well because it shows the path of the sun, which is called the ecliptic, and this helps you remember its classification. So this constellation of Leo would be a zodiacal constellation because the sun and planets pass through it. Take a look at this picture. Are you able to find the backwards question mark? Can you see the bright star in the heart of the lion? Are you able to pick out the triangle hindquarters? If you can, you're starting to get a good idea of what Leo looks like. Here again is the shape traced out for you. If we move on to another picture, just to practice, and the way I'm always going to teach you the constellations is to show you lots of different pictures so you can really start to get a feel for what each constellation looks like. So this picture is a big, huge sky view of lots of constellations. And I wanted to show this one to you because if you can find Ursa Major right here, this asterism will help you find Leo. So remember in a previous lesson that Ursa Major is actually this whole constellation right here, but the Big Dipper sits within Ursa Major. And if you find the pointer stars right here, it can help you point down right to Leo. And you can only see a portion of Leo. Here's the backwards question mark right here. And then the hind quarters are right there. So to review that again, go back up, find the Big Dipper, find the pointer stars. Remember that the pointer stars point up to Polaris but then they also point down to Leo, which is right here. We're going to stick with this picture a little while longer because it really just shows us so much of what's going on in the sky. So as you're looking at this picture, see if you can identify some of the brighter stars 
and do these stars make any type of shapes? Now, you may have remembered from a previous lesson about asterisms that asterisms are used as a tool to help us point out other things in the sky. And what I want to show you in this picture is the asterism called the spring triangle. And here is where it looks like. So bouncing back, you may be able to see this bright star. It could connect with this bright star. And then finally connecting with this bright star. Okay, and the names of these are Arcturus. So remember we arc to Arcturus and then we speed to Spica. Spica is in Virgo. And then moving over here, this is Denebula which is one of the brighter stars within Leo the Lion, which I will review with you in a little bit. Another asterism that you can see in the spring sky is called the Great Diamond. So it's basically taking the spring triangle and adding another star to it called Cor Caroli, which is a part of Canis Venetici. So here is the Great Diamond. And the reason I teach you these asterisms is because if you live in a place where there is poor visibility because there's a lot of light pollution, these bright stars will stand out to you. And if you can point these bright stars out, you can start to figure out where everything else lies. And just to point out everything in the sky, here are all the constellations that are in this picture. So, of course, we'll start with the Big Dipper, okay, which points up to Polaris. Oops. And we have right here is Ursa Minor, okay, going back down. Remember the pointer stars point down to Leo, at least a portion of Leo we can see. Moving back up, we have Botez, because we arc to Arcturus. And Arcturus is a part of Botez, which is the herdsman. You can see Corona Borealis sitting right here. Kind of looks like a smile. Moving down, we arc to Arcturus and then speed to Spica. This is my interpretation of Virgo, and you're going to see it interpreted in many different ways. But she is a very huge constellation and she does not have a lot of bright stars except Spica. Okay, and then coming over here, this used to be the tuft of the lion's tail, but it's now known as Coma Berenices. And then right here, our final little two-star constellation is Canis Venetici. So lots to see in this big picture. And if you can't see it right away, that's okay. It takes time to train your eye. And that's why we go over this again and again. So you can start to find these patterns. Let's take a look at the bright stars that sit within Leo the Lion. So here is our picture. Find that backwards question mark. Move back towards the triangle hindquarters. So our first bright star that I like to teach you is called Regulus or Regulus. You're going to hear it pronounced in different ways. I typically say Regulus and what Regulus means in Latin is little king and it is the brightest star so it has a designation of alpha and this star is about 85 light years away and it's also known as the heart of the lion and it's typically a whitish blue star. Moving on, we also have Denebola, which is known as the lion's tail and this star is a little bit closer to us at 39 light years away and it is a whitish blue star so kind of look for that distinctive color. And finally, another star right here is called Algeba, and it's known as the brow or the forehead, and that's what Algeba means in um, Arabic, is the brow or the forehead. Even though that this star um, 
it may not really represent the brow or the forehead in its modern depiction. And it's actually a double star. If you can, you can kind of see that right here. There's two little stars here. And this pair of stars is 130 light years away. And what's interesting is that these two stars orbit each other every 500 years. And scientists ex suspect that these stars are in the end stages of their life. And in 2009, a planet was found to be orbiting around this system. And it may have a possible second companion planet, but that is still unconfirmed. So always interesting to find when there are new planets out there. So just to review again, we have Regulus, we have Denebola, which is the tail of the lion, and Algieba, which means the brow or forehead. Let's take a look at the different celestial objects that you can find within Leo. So here's a map of what Leo looks like. Again, your backwards question mark. You have Regulus sitting right here. This is the ecliptic, the path of the sun. And then you have Denebola, the tail of the lion. And in between the two brightest stars are where you have these little cohorts of galaxies. So you have M65 and M66 sitting right here with another little galaxy. And then you have M95, 96, and 105 sitting together. So let's zoom in and see what we would, we would see if we had a high-powered telescope. So here's M65 right here, M66, and then NGC 3628. NGC stands for New General Catalog. It's the new way or the more modern way in which we're naming different celestial objects. And you can take a look at this and, and see that these are all spiral galaxies. And I have looked at this on a really, really clear night here in Hawaii. And I've just basically seen little fuzzy patches, no real definition. You would really have to see, a, see this with a really great telescope. And if we were to zoom in on these, this is what Messier 65 would look like. This is a composite picture, so um, you can kind of see that's why it's broken up a little bit. And this is Messier 66. So really, this photograph was taken with some of the best telescopes in the world, and it really is a beautiful object. Going back to our diagram, let's take a look right here. M105, 95, and 96. So here's Messier 95. This is the same exact picture, but this is taken with visible light, where this is taken with ultraviolet. Um, sensors on it. So visible light and then ultraviolet light. And this is the same name. Remember some objects are being renamed with the new more modern way, new general catalog 3351. I typically stick to just using the Messier term here. And then moving on, here's Messier 96, another beautiful spiral galaxy. And you can actually see other little galaxies um, just kind of in the background here. And then finally we can take a look at M101. This is known as a pinwheel galaxy, a very famous galaxy. And you can just see its spiral arms coming out here. So hopefully if you have a wonderful high-powered telescope you can capture some images like this. If you're just using binoculars you're really just gonna see fuzzy patches. But again it's still amazing that that we can see light from these objects. This concludes our video for Leo the Lion, so let's review the main points that we learned. Leo the Lion is best seen during the spring months and it's highest in the sky during the month of April. It is classified as a zodiacal constellation, which means that the sun does pass through this constellation. You can find it using the pointer stars of the Big Dipper. If you know where the Big Dipper is and you know where the pointer stars are, if you follow it in one direction, it'll lead you to Polaris. And if you follow the pointer stars into another direction, it will lead you right to Leo.
The bright stars to know are Regulus right here, which means little king, Denebola, which means lion's tail, and then Algeba right here, which is actually a double star or a binary star, and it stands for the brow or the forehead of the lion. The celestial objects you're going to look for in this region right here, you're going to be looking for M65 and M66, and then M95, 96, and M101 will be in this region. I hope this video was helpful for you to learn about Leo, and if you have any questions, please write them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to answer you back. Thank you for watching.